What's up fish friends, it's Alex here, your friendly reef dog. And today I'm gonna to share with you my experiences of keeping the gorgeous Harlequin tusk fish. Now, before we get into the video, if you are new to the channel, I put out a video every Friday at 4 p.m. UK time with tips on how to set up and maintain an awesome reef tank. So if that's your goal, have a think about subscribing. Now you can tell from the thumbnail that this isn't exactly gonna be a glowing review, but how bad could one fish be, right? Well, hold that thought, let's take a look. If you're researching a harlequin tusk fish, there are certain things you'll probably already know. You'll know that they grow to around 10 inches in length, that they're a risk with cleanup crew and maybe small fish, and, depending on who you listen to, that they need a tank of at least 100 gallons, 125 gallons, or maybe even 175 gallons. You'll know they're a member of the RAS family, that Australian specimens are prettier than the Indonesian specimens, and that they're safe with corals. But the purpose of this video is to tell you what it's really like to keep one, so I'll share my experience of my harlequin tusk fish over the last six months. Mine is an Australian and was about three to four inches long when I bought him, and I guess he's grown around half an inch in the six months I've had him. But the most striking thing about his size is just how solid he is. He's noticeably chunkier than other big fish like Tangs, and I reckon he could hold his own in the UFC light heavyweight division. Now his size means a couple of things. Firstly, he'll need a decent amount of swimming space. My display tank is four foot by two foot by two foot and around 100 gallons, and I think it's too small. He spends a lot of his time in a cave he's made home, but when he comes out, he covers ground quickly and barges any other fish out of the way. When he does go for a power swim, he's also a risk to your SPS corals, and he recently snapped the top off my lime in the sky aquapora. Being a heavy set fellow, he also poops quite a lot. Seriously, the first time I saw it, I thought my cat had had a dump in the tank. And that means he'll take up a lot of your tank's capacity for bio load, which is another reason he's probably better suited to a tank of six feet or more. So what about his character then? Well, they're classed as semi-aggressive, but I've also heard them described as timid and reclusive. But that hasn't been the case with this guy. I call him Prison Rules because shortly after I introduced him, he attacked the biggest fish in the tank and took over the position as the dominant fish in the tank immediately. That was a Solon Rass I'd had for two years and he just wouldn't leave him alone. Every time the Rass came out, he'd get chased back into his safe hole immediately, which meant he couldn't swim around at all and he didn't get much food. Sadly, after a couple of months of this, I found the Rass dead stuck to my power head. And the tusk fish generally acts like a bit of a douchebag, strutting around the tank, pushing others out of the way. I recently introduced a new jawfish, and the tusk immediately grabbed him in his jaws, killed him and ate him. This is the tusk chewing on the jawfish in his cave, and watching that happen was really not nice to see, particularly given it was my fault for miscalculating the risk. In terms of cleanup crew, the tusk fish hasn't been too bad with snails. He'll attack them if they fall off the glass, but most of my rasses do that anyway. But he does seem to like the more crunchy invert. Shortly after introducing him, I stopped seeing my anemone crab and pistol shrimp, and after a couple of weeks, he decided my cleaner shrimp was lunch. Now I don't have any hermit crabs, but I suspect they'd be on the menu if I did have. So if you want a tusk fish, a cleanup crew predominantly of snails might be the way to go. Although I've heard other people suffer snail wipeouts, so it might just be pot luck. So what have I learnt in six months then? Well, this particular specimen has been a bit of a monster. As beautiful as he is, I found him to be quite a nasty fish, and he's upset the otherwise peaceful balance in my tank, which is a really important part of the hobby for me. I have plenty of small fish he hasn't bothered, like a pygmy perchlet, a Midas blenny, and two clownfish, but he'd have eaten my shrimp goby if the little scamp wasn't so wily, and he's just generally quite belligerent. Eating the jawfish was the final straw for me, so I caught him and took him back to my local fish shop. It probably hasn't helped the situation with him being in a relatively small tank, but I've now read plenty of other stories of these guys being aggressive, even in a tank as big as nine feet long. So my opinion is that's just their nature as an apex predator. But as with all fish, behavior can vary from specimen to specimen. So in the right tank, maybe six feet long or more, with no small fish and no crunchy inverts, the harlequin tusk fish could still be an absolute centerpiece fish. But for the vast majority of us, my opinion is that they're simply not worth a hassle and will cause more harm to your reef than good. At the end of the day, providing a harmonious environment for your fish will make their lives less stressful and your experience more relaxing. So for that reason, I'd suggest you look elsewhere for a showpiece fish. So those are my experiences and my opinion of this fish, but behavior can vary between specimens. So I'd love to hear from any of you guys who've got experience. So let me know in the comment section below if you've kept one of these guys. If you enjoyed the video then, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next Friday. And until next time, happy reefing.